back in where it's real alive in here after Pastor Cass done brought that word. I'm telling you right now, good word, Pastor Cass. Good word. God-centered. And he started off with a quote, and I'm going to start off with a quote too. Smith Wigglesworth. Great faith is a product of great fights. Great testimonies are an outcome of great tests, and great triumphs only come from great trials. And I want to introduce our next speaker, which I have known I have known him for a very long time. It's 1998. 19, no, 1999. October 1999. He's from South Africa. He was a missionary sent to the United States. When it was at his very first service, I've sat under a lot of his teachings. Um, he is a spiritual father to me. He has influenced my theology and the way I think. Great man of faith, multiple healings. You know, uh, one of the first messages that I ever heard him preach on was marriage and about family. And if it hadn't have been during that time, me and my wife would probably not still be together today. But it's because... He listened to what the Spirit had to say, and he brought it. And I know he's going to bring it tonight. He's going to bless you, but he's also going to challenge you. Pastor Hansi, come on up, buddy. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for inviting me, and thank you, Pastor Cass, for a good word. I was so impressed with that man. I said, man, you know, even us preachers, we got to make sure that we live God-centered, right? Not just the people out there. We got to do exactly that, what God wants us to do. And um, let me just get all my stuff, okay? Yeah. That's not mine. That's so sorry. Leave it around. That's okay. And thank you that you're going to listen to me tonight. I am praying that this conference will be a good conference, that it will in infill you and that you will be filled with the Holy Spirit and with power. I'm preaching tonight and speaking tonight on the power of God. That's what I chose and that's what they told me that I can speak on. And uh, the reason why I chose the power of God is, <clears throat> excuse me, is because I go around a lot to a lot of churches and I'm seeing the church, now let me just put this quickly. I don't want to hurt nobody here tonight, okay? But I, if I trample on your toes, well, take the shoe and put it on, then, okay? <laughs> if it's not, then take it out. But you've got to be challenged. Somewhere in your life, you've got to realize, I want to go right back to the basics of Christianity. That's what my brother was talking about tonight. What he said tonight was basic Christianity. And we, the church, we busy losing the basics. We looking for stuff out there and everything must happen, happen, but we've lost the basics. Because if we haven't, I'm not seeing people getting saved. I'm not seeing people getting healed. I'm not being people, seeing people getting set free by the power of God no more, like it used to be. So, Holy Spirit, I'm asking you right now that you will open up the hearts of the people, that this church is not just going to be another church that is just going to talk the power, but they're going to walk the power of God. They're going to demonstrate the power of God. Help me, Holy Spirit, to bring this word through you and not from my flesh, and that the people will listen with the ears of the Holy Spirit and not with their fleshly ears tonight. That they will understand the word, get hold of it, not be offended, but take it, run with it, get it inside of them, and then do the word of God, as the, as the word says. I thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Come on, church. We, we, we're, we're, I mean, John 14, 12, Jesus said, Hey, if you believe in me, the works that I've done, you also will do. You will actually do greater works than me. 
And then he said, and if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. Why are we not seeing the miracles? Why are we not seeing the power of God move in our, in, in our churches like it used to? I remember when coming back in 1999, we should see people, people would bring people to church and they would get saved, they would get healed. People aren't doing that anymore. It's almost like we're waiting for God to do something. Can I give you a nugget tonight? God already done everything. What else do you want him to do? He's already given us Jesus. He's already given us the blood. What else do you want him to do? But Jesus said to the disciples, listen, I'm going to my father. And when I go to my father, you will do exactly what I've done. If you believe in me, I will ask the Father to send you another helper, the Holy Spirit, which was in Jesus, and that's why he could do all those miracles, and that's why he could demonstrate the power of God. What about you and I? Do you have the Holy Spirit? Yes. Let me hear you. Do you have the Holy Spirit? Yes. Why are you not doing the, why aren't you demonstrating the power? What are you waiting for? You're waiting for me? You're waiting for Pastor Cash? You're waiting for Pastor Nathan to do the miracles? Aren't you disciples? Aren't you full of the power of God? Yes. Aren't you anointed of the Lord? Yes. Aren't you disciples? Yes. Well, let's start acting like that. Where, where's Joey? He, he drives that stupid old Dodge truck. <laughs> And he could take you outside there and take me outside there and say, Brother Hansi, come here, let me, let me show you what power is. And he'll get in that dirt truck and he'll start that thing and go, hum, hum. Brother, Brother Hansi, can you hear the power? I said, yeah, Joey, I can hear that power. Hum, hum. And after about five minutes, I'm going to say, Joey, I can hear the power. But you're not showing me nada, brother. I'm seeing nothing. I'm just hearing the power, but nothing else. I said, come here, Joey. Let me take it to my Christian Chevrolet truck. <laughs> and I'll start that. Yeah, Baba. I'll start that Chevrolet and go, hum, hum. Joey, Joey, can you hear the power? Yeah. I said, now let me show you it. And I'll put that thing in gear. Yeah, Baba. You see tires and, and smoke. I said, you see, you see, and, 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 and I know we're laughing now, but that's what we've been doing as, as Christians. We've been talking, we've been talking, we've been talking. People are tired of hearing about the power of God. They want to start seeing the power of God. Do you believe in the power of God? Yes. Do you believe in healing? Yes. When are you going to demonstrate it? I went to a church in Connecticut. And the pastor said to me, Brother Hansi, I said, do you guys believe in healing? Oh, yeah. Do you believe in salvation? Oh, yeah. I said, it's not enough just to believe in it. If you believe in something, you've got to speak it and you've got to demonstrate it. And he said to me, in our bylaws, we say we are a church that believes in healing. I said, when last did you have somebody healed in your church? You're not going to believe this. You know what he said to me? 20 years ago. It's in their, in their doctrine. We are a healing, believing church. But they never demonstrate it. And I'm, I'm afraid that the church is going backwards towards we are doing less and less with the power of God. And Satan is making and playing havoc with us. If you've forgotten, you are in a spiritual warfare against the enemy. Just look at the last few years. You are not playing games. You are not here just to have moonshine and roses. You are in a fight. That's why you put on the armor of God. That's why you have to fight. Not with your powerful mm, Schwarzenegger bodies, and not with your money, and not with your brain power, and not the way that you feel, but with the power of God. 
That's why Paul says in Ephesians, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now, how does this happen? I've seen a lot of Christians do exactly what we read in Luke chapter 18, verse 18. Can we go there quickly and and read that? And a certain ruler asked Jesus, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. Come on, you all know the scripture. You know that the, do you know the commandments? You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and your mother. Jesus is talking to this rich young ruler. All these things I've kept since my, I was a boy, that young ruler said. When he had heard this, he became very sad, this rich man, because he was very wealthy and rich. So what happens? Jesus told him and said to him, listen, how hard it is for a rich man or to enter the kingdom of God. Indeed, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. God, Jesus was not against people being rich. He was against people being rich and making their riches number one in their life, the center of their life. Is your television the center of your life? Is your money the center of your life? Is your work the center of your life? Is your golf the center of your life? (laughs) Or is Jesus the center of your life? And Jesus was basically, if he was here tonight, he would have said, for those, it's easier for those of you um, to to get, it's going to be more difficult for you to get into, into heaven because your golf and whatever else is number one, you've got to make Jesus Christ your number one. Go to the next verse, verse, verse six. And after all of these things, those who heard this asked, who then can be saved? Who can be saved? I thought he was joking when he kept on playing with this thing, but I mean, now I know why, because it feels like it's falling off. Jesus, people said, who then can be saved? That's what I hear the church saying. Who can be healed? Why aren't people getting healed? I'm telling you why people aren't getting healed, because you and I are not making use of the power of God. We are not using the power of God. We are accepting that to be sick is normal. We are accepting to be poor is normal. We are accepting that your children are rebellious is normal. We are just accepting that you've got marriage problem. It's normal. Listen, Satan will torment you if he can't get you to hell. He'll torment you day and night. Attack you, attack you, attack you. You're in a wrestling match, a match and you better wake up and start fighting back Amen. with the power of God. But Jesus turns around and he says to them, listen, what is impossible with man is possible with God. And and God said to me, here here is one little nugget that I want to give you, Hansi. That what you cannot do, I can do. And I said, God, I know that. Everybody knows that. What is impossible for me or man is possible for you. God said, but go and have a look what the word possible means in the Greek. Have you ever done that? The word possible in the Greek means this, dunamis, dunatos. You know what dunamis and dunatos in the Greek means? Power, strength, might, authority, ability, showing God's power. It's like electricity. When you take that cord and nothing's working and you put it in and you put on that switch, and it's there. This thing is not working with me. (laughs) Okay, I'm going to put it right, right, right. Here we go. And God said, that what is impossible for you guys, that what you don't have the power, you don't have the might, you don't have the strength, You don't have the ability to do, guess what, guys? God's got the power to heal you. God's got the power to set you free. God's got the power to get you off pornography. God's got the power to heal your marriage and fix your finances and let your church grow. God's got all the power. We just got to use it. Because you cannot heal cancer. You cannot fix nothing. 
You cannot win Satan without the power of God. Don't try fighting that guy. He's got power. He's come to steal, kill, and destroy. That's power. But oh, but guess what? Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Greater is the power of God in me than cancer. Greater is the power in me than Satan that's in the world. Greater is the power in me than Satan's power. That's why Jesus said in Luke 10, 19, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. Those are demons. And power over all the power of the enemy. Do you realize that you have so much power that you've got more power than Satan? But when I look at some Christians, they're like, marshmallows. <laughs> Pastor, when I come to churches, I can hear. <laughs> and I'm thinking, what's going on? Oh, it's Satan trampling on the Christians. <laughs> we so much, so many marshmallows around. Everybody just, I'm sick, I'm this, okay, it's normal. What, what can I do? I don't know what to do. Stand up. Put on the armor of God. Start fighting the good fight of faith and start saying, hey, I can go through this thing. And when I get out the other side, I will be, be victorious through Christ Jesus that gives me strength. Well, when I had that cancer, I preached last year, after going through that cancer treatment, I walked around that hospital. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I will go through this chemo through Christ Jesus that strengthens me. I will not get sick through Christ Jesus that gives me strength. I had still had to fight the good fight of faith and use the word of God and speak the power of God in Jesus' name, although I knew God was going to heal me. You are still in a warfare. You still got to fight. And you got to put on that armor of God and then use God's power. God said in Luke 1, 37, I'm going to try and, 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 and stick to the scriptures that I gave them in, in, in order so they can know what I'm, what I'm saying and, and where I am. Where, where am I now? Okay. Luke 1, 37, with God... For with God, nothing will be impossible when he spoke to the, when the angel spoke to Mary. In Mark 9, 22, 23, and often as they throw this young boy that's, uh, that was mute into the fire, the demon would throw him into the fire and nothing could happen. Uh, but uh, he said, but if you can do anything, Jesus, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible for him who believes. If you have faith that, that the power of God can work, then it will work. But not just believe, but now believe that it can work and then start functioning. Don't just hum, hum all the time. Put yourself in first gear. And let's go, Baba. I'm tired of Satan destroying and killing and murdering and stealing. And we're just sitting back doing absolutely nothing. When are we going to rise up as a church? Some people say, well, we can't vote the government out. Well, pray them out. Some people say, I don't like this. Well, pray them out. Believe them out. Speak them out. Well, I don't know what Satan's, I don't like what Satan's doing to my family. Well, resist Satan steadfast by, in faith. I've got a little chihuahua doggy. Man, she was, well, I, I, I say to my wife and my daughter, I don't like these chihuahuas because they got to poop and peep all off, off of the um, potty pads and we live on the fifth wheel. So they said, no, but dad, I'll, I'll pick it up. My wife said, oh, I'll pick up the poopy and the peepee. I said, okay, then we can get the chihuahuas. So we got the two chihuahuas. It wasn't the second day they pooped and peeped off, off of the potty pads. Guess who's picking up the poop and the peepee now? <laughs> Papa. I'm still doing it. <laughs> Twelve years later. <laughs> and when that one little chihuahua poops on off the uh, man, the guy just doesn't want to poop on the body pad. And next to the I feel like he's just kicking this stupid thing. And then I, I don't kick him, but I just go, go through the, 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 the motions, and the chihuahua goes. Yow, 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 yow. <laughs> and my wife says, "Come to mama. Come to mama. Come to mama." And I'm thinking, 
And that dog's afraid of me when I, when I go like this. You know, I don't want to kick him. But I won't. I love him. <laughs> I just don't like the poop and the pee all the, off of the body pad. <laughs> I thought to myself, next time you've got anger in your marriage, next time you and your wife are fighting or your children are rebellious, what are you doing? Get out of my house, you rebellious spirit. Go away, I curse you in Jesus' name. When are you kicking those things out of your house? Or are you just, just going to say, well, uh, what, what can I do? Listen to me. I've seen the power of God heal AIDS people. I've seen the power of God heal di- type 1 diabetes people. People puke yellow stuff coming out of them. They puke little snails coming out of them. They puke up little snakes this size because of witchcraft in Africa. I've seen it with my own eyes. That is the power of God. We're not seeing it in our churches. And I'm not saying, well, you're going to come puke, yeah? I'm I'm just saying, we're not seeing deliverances. We're not seeing people getting healed from those kind of sicknesses. And I wish I can just let you all know, just for the interest, I take your hand like this and put it on your chest and say, I am anointed. I am full of God. I have the authority. I have the power of God in me. I can do all things. I can do anything through Christ Jesus that gives me strength. Do you believe that? Well, let's start functioning in it. Where do I get the power from? What is God's power? Well, let's start somewhere. There's a lot of, how can I put it, power tools that God has given us that represents his power that you and I have down on earth here that we could use. Can we go through about four of them? There's many others. I'll, I'll just mention a few, but I'm going to go about four or five. Just go, go through them quickly. I don't want to be too, too, too late. Number one, the first power tool that I've realized we have, which we are not using like we should, is the mighty, powerful name of Jesus Christ. Remember what I said. This is basic Christianity. I'm, 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 I'm reminding you, you have the name of Jesus. Any name that is in some kind of authority, a policeman, a CEO, a pastor, a manager, has got power to it when you say that name, right? But there's only one name that is above all other names. Ooh. In, and first of all, in Mark chapter 16, 17, 18, and these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. They will drink anything deadly, and by no means will it hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. Yeah, but Brother Hansi, I've done that in the name of Jesus. Listen. That mighty name of Jesus, Philippians 2, 9, 11. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him his, this name, which is above every other name. This name is so powerful that you don't hear people say, oh, my Buddha. Oh, Hare Krishna, but it's hot. Do you ever hear people saying that? No, do you know what they say? Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. And they use our God's name as a cuss word. Do you know why they're doing it? Because the demons let them do that, and they know the power of that name. But the people that are saying it don't know the power of that name. And to me, the name of Jesus has become almost like a cliche to the Christian. They're so used to saying, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. But then it doesn't work, because I will tell you why. But before we get there, it says that, that name was being given to him above all the name. That the name of Jesus, at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. Listen, you got to start taking that name of Jesus quite. And when you say to cancer, in the name of Jesus, get out, that cancer spirit's got to bow. 
That's what the word says. Do you believe that? Yeah, but I've done that and I'm not seeing it. You don't walk by sight. You walk by faith. I prayed for people that I see absolutely nothing happen. Nothing. And two weeks later, they call me. I've gone to the doctor. Well, first of all, you and I have got to agree that that name, above all names, has got power in it. Do you believe it? In Acts chapter 4, 12, there, it, said, it said, Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given by men and big, uh, among which men will be, get saved. If you pray for somebody's salvation, you don't see them get saved immediately. You're praying for Brother Tom, and Brother Tom, Lord, save him, save him, save him, in Jesus' name. A year later, Brother Tom gets saved. But how did you do that? You believed in the name, that that name of Jesus Christ would save you. Because you, you, you can't get saved without the name of Jesus. You can't get healed. In Acts chapter 3, 6 and 16, Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the, in the name of Jesus Christ, or the Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And when they questioned Paul or, 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 or Peter later on in verse 16, Peter said, and his name, through faith in his name, has made, made this man strong, whom you see you know. Yes, the faith which comes from him has given him this perfect soundness. Hey, that guy got healed because they had faith in that name. Do you really believe that the name of Jesus can heal people? Well, it has to, because if you say, Jesus, the demon or that sickness or everything in heaven, on earth, under the earth, must bow their knee. I've seen an old senior lady, 80 years old, walking with a handbag, and a guy attacks her and grabs her bag and wants to pluck out her little purse out of her hand. And you know what she does? She's so fr fragile, she can't do nothing. She couldn't even hold on to the, bag, uh, to the purse. But she said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That guy stopped and fell over bah, on the floor. It was on a video. And they asked her, what did you do? She said, all I said was, Jesus, Jesus. And the guy fell over. <laughs> but that's all she had. Now, you go to Africa, where they don't have our doctors, they don't have our finances, they don't have our insurance. All they have is the name of Jesus. Yeah. Pastor Nathan, up in, the, up in Nigeria, boy, when, we, when I go there, and, and, and those pastors, those black pastors, when they say, in Jesus' name, boy, you see stuff happen. Because that's all they got. That's all they have. And their witchcraft. And they, they say, all right, your name of your Jesus is stronger than our witchcraft. Show us. Church, don't just use the name of Jesus idly. Don't just, well, you know, in the name of Jesus. Believe it. Believe what it says. Believe that it has got power in it. And that it is the name above all names. James chapter 5, 14 says that you've got to, be, if there's anybody sick among you, let him call out the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Use that mighty name of Jesus. Would you please do that? Because that name is so powerful. Proverbs 18, 10 said, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. Come on, I can give you so many scriptures. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do. But you see what we do? We do it and we don't see the result immediately. It's, it's not working. I'm going to tell you again. What you receive in a hurry, you can lose in a hurry. So you've got to wait on the Lord. God's timing is always good. But that doesn't take away the power of the name. You've got to believe that when you say in Jesus' name, that, that sickness will go. So whatever your problem is tonight, do you know, want to use the first power to? Not just, well, in the name of Jesus, I just hope and believe that it's going to work. No. You tell Satan, you put your finger in his nose, you got to bow your knee, you demon of cancer, you demon of COVID, you demon of diabetes, you demon of heart attacks and poverty, in the mighty name of Jesus. And they got to listen to you. Are you getting my point here? Well, start somewhere if you haven't done that. 
Start using, taking control and authority, and you've been given authority to use that power. Are you doing it? And you might just see things change in your life. The second power tool that we have, huh, now you know where I'm going, is the precious blood of Jesus Christ. When Jesus died on that cross, <laughs> and that blood flowed, it was there to wash you clean. It was there to take all your sins away. Oh boy, is that not power? That blood, those stripes on Jesus' back was there to heal you. There is nothing that can heal like the blood of Jesus. Nothing that can wash you clean like the blood of Jesus. First John 1, 7 says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, you heard about the light tonight, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sins when we ask him to forgive us. Amen. The sinner standing here, no, I'm, I'm not an old sinner saved by grace. I'm a righteous man of God right now, and I make mistakes right now. I'm not an old sinner no more. I used to be an old sinner. Now I am righteous. I'm right standing with God because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Are you getting this? Okay. Washed me clean. He washed me clean from adultery, from fornication, from pornography, from drugs, from alcohol. 36 years ago, nothing could make me stop doing those things except the blood of Jesus. There is power in the blood. Are you using the blood of Jesus? Are you making use of it? Ephesians 1, 7 says, in him we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. That word redemption means to be set free, to be redeemed, to be delivered because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? I hope you guys are getting it. First Peter 2.24, that he bore all our sins on his body on the tree, that we having died of sins might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. Revelation 12, 11 said, I'm an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of my testimonies. How do you use the blood of Jesus? Do you even believe that there is power in the blood of Jesus? Yeah. Or are you just singing it? Oh, there's power, power, wonder working power, but we don't use it. The churches have lost the power of the blood. They don't even take communion anymore. There's churches that don't even talk about the blood anymore. It'll offend the Muslim that comes in. It'll offend people that come in. We don't want to offend. Well, it offended the, some of the people around Jesus. Some of his disciples got offended in John chapter 6 after he spoke about uh, the, the blood. It offended them when Jesus said, you're going to eat my body and drink my blood. I'm not going to. I'm not a, uh, I'm going to eat people's bodies and drink Jesus' blood. And they left him. So how do you use the blood? That's why we take communion. As many times as you take the communion, remember what Jesus' power did for you. How he washed you clean. How he covers you with the blood. Are you covering yourself with the blood of Jesus? The way that you use the blood is by speaking the blood. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. You take communion. Do you cover yourself with the blood when you go to work every morning? Do you cover your wife with the blood? Do you cover your children with the blood? Oh, no, I don't. Well, then they open targets. I don't know about you, but not a day goes by that me and my wife does not take communion. Oh, Brother Hansi, but that's a sacred thing that we got to do. I mean, and if you do that, it's going to become a ritual. Well, then Bible reading is a ritual, then praying is a ritual, because I do that every day. And every day I take my communion. And I cover me and my wife and my RV and my Chevrolet Christian truck. <laughs> and my children and my grandchildren and my supporters and all the churches that we go to. We cover with the blood of Jesus for, as protection. That's why, because they had to put the blood on the doorpost. When the spirit of death came through with the Israelites, none of the Israelites died. Are you covering yourself? Are you speaking the blood? 
Are you using it? I'm not saying you've got to take communion every day, but I don't. When I come to churches, nobody takes communion because they give me because they want to give me all all the time that I need. So they are going to take communion by myself, me and my wife and my children. But I use the blood. I'm not just oh, there's power in the blood. There's power in the blood. I'm showing Satan. I, and I anoint my truck, and I anoint my army, and I anoint myself and my wife through the blood of Jesus Christ for protection. In the name of Jesus Christ, I apply the blood. So now I've got a double whammy power here against Satan. Satan, in the name of Jesus, I cover my finances with the blood, my job, my cars, my home, my life, my body, everything with the blood of Jesus. Use the power. And you know what Satan can do? When you, in the name of Jesus, he's got to bow. And when you cover yourself with the blood, he's got to bypass you. Will that mean we're never going to be attacked? No, you're going to be attacked. But you don't have to die. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> and uh, In Africa, there was a little village, and there were chickens running around with red ribbons tied to their back. So the missionary said to the tribe, what are, you, what are the chickens with the red ribbons? They said, oh, the red ribbons scare away all the um, attackers, the birds, the eagles and the stuff. They want to come and catch the, the, the chickens. He said, well, why, why red? He said, well, well, we tried all other colors and, and they still catch the chickens. Only the red ribbon. Scares them away. Have you tied the blood of Jesus? The red blood of Jesus? Are you applying it to your life? That when Satan comes, he sees that red blood that was flowing from the back of Jesus and the body of Jesus Christ. He's got he's to go. Martin Luther was sick. He was, had a lot of fever. He was busy dying, Martin Luther. And he was very sick. And he says he was lying in bed on the point to die, and he actually recovered afterwards. But he said, and all of a sudden, the accuser, Satan himself, was standing at the end of his bed with a long piece of roll of paper. And he started reading all the stuff that Martin Luther had done wrong. He said, and he said, while I was lying there, I realized, oh my goodness, this guy, Satan, is reading down all my sins. And if... The, <laughs> And if I go according to that, I'm not going to go to heaven. He said, and when Satan got to the end, he heard this voice inside him say, remind him that he forgot something. And Martin Luther said, all of a sudden I got, oh, yes, Lord Jesus, thank you. He said, Satan, I've heard everything that you've read me, and everything you said there is true. I've done all of those things, but you've just forgotten to write down one thing, that the blood of Jesus Christ washes all that away. I'm on my way to heaven. That is power. Are you using the name? Are you using the blood of Jesus Christ? The third one, the word of God. Oh, boy. Didn't you say at the stand? The beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The sort of the spirit that you can pluck out and walk around, take with both hands, and whatever Satan does something, you can cut him. Cut him to pieces with that sword, that two-edged sword, sharper than any other sword. The power of God. Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17 says, Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation for those who believe, for the Greek and for the Jew. Come on. And verse 17, it says, for in, in it, in the word of God, is the righteousness of God that is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Do you have faith in the word? Well, you've got to have faith in the word because the word gives you faith. That's where your faith comes from. Are you using the word or are you walking around with a sword hanging? You're walking like John Wayne. But you never draw out, uh, no, John Wayne didn't have swords, he had guns, okay. But I mean, John Wayne with his guns, if, he could, if he'd walked around like this the whole time and never drawn his gun, he would be dead. We Christians are walking with that sword, that powerful, 
power of God. Walking over there, it's, it's shining. It's a big sword. And you never pluck it out. You know why? Because you don't know the word. The Christians don't know the word. You think I'm lying? Come on, help me quickly. Let me, let me quickly catch you out. Let's see how good you know the word. No weapon? Shall? Don't you all quote that scripture, right? What does the rest of the scripture say? <laughs> you, they most probably will know, but the rest of you don't know the rest of the scripture. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Because I personalize the word, okay? It actually says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. But I personalize the word. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against me in judgment, that criticizes me, gossips about me, hurts me, destroys me, curses me, I condemn the tongue, not the people. So let's read it again. No weapon formed against you or me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against us in judgment, we condemn the tongue. That is our heritage as servants of the Lord. And our righteousness is from God. You see how Satan will catch you and you only say a part of the, word, of the scripture? You don't know where is it written? doesn't matter where it's written. Just know the word. You see, in China, people don't have Bibles. But when they do get a Bible, they tear out pages. Give you one page, you one page, you one page, you one page. And when they come back, everybody's learned that. And then they swap pages. In the end, everybody knows one chapter off by heart because they can't be caught with the Bible in their hand. So when they come to church, there's no Bibles, no nothing. Uh, Brother Kaz, would you please quote Romans chapter 1 for us, the whole chapter? And he gets, stands up and quotes the whole chapter. They memorize it. You see, they can take away everything from you, but they cannot take the power of God that's inside of you, in your spirit man, the word of God, they cannot take from you. And without the word of God, the food, the spiritual food inside of you, you will become an anorexic Christian. And if you look at the Christians, the small little demons of anger and bitterness and hatred and jealousy and offense and disobedience and all those little things, the demons just run between the Christians and when they bump them, the Christians just fall over because they're so weak. They have no power of God, no word inside of them. You, some people don't even know where some of the books are. You think I'm lying? And Guys, I've spoken to people that call me, Brother Hansi, I was in one of your revivals five years ago. I got saved, uh, but now I've backstood. And the first thing I ask him, you still going to church? No. So you stopped going to church, right? You stopped praying, right? Yep. You stopped reading the word, right? Yep. Listen, I, could, I can preach on one of these for an hour on each one of them. I don't want to do that. You know what I'm saying? Jeremiah 23, 29. Is my word not like a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that pah, breaks the rock in pieces. Do you have some rocks in your life? you have some problems in your life? Use the word against it. Find words against sickness. Find a word against for finances, find a word for your marriage, find a word for your children, find a word that, where there is problems and start quoting that scripture. There isn't a problem that you have that the word is not an answer. You're feeling discouraged? Go read what David did when he was discouraged. You're feeling anxiety and worries? Go read Psalms, it'll tell you. You've got problems with your children, Psalms will tell you, Proverbs will tell you. You can beat them with a rod, they will not die. <laughs> you've got problems with your wife and your husband and your marriage. Well, husbands, you've got to love your wife in spite of what she's doing, like Christ loves the church. You made up the bed, you've got to sleep in it, Baba, you chose her. <laughs> Come on, you know what I'm talking about. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Look what the word does. The first 
guy that God said, you will now function according to the word that I've given you, the Torah. He said, this book shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate in it. Read it, speak it, learn it, teach it, use it. That's what the meditate means. Day and night, continually, so that you may observe, you could see what is written in it, and then do according to what is written in it. Then you will have good success. Then you will be prosperous. That's how the power of God works. Why are you so quiet? Are you reading the word? What are you listening to? The television? All these stupid television stuff that they're lying and cheating and frauding us with? Or are you listening to what the word says? Are you listening to what the doctors are saying? Or are you believing the report of the Lord? When the doctors told me I got cancer, science. I said, okay. But you know what? Your science is the fact, right? Yeah. But you know how a fact is nullified? Through the truth. The truth nullifies a fact. You can give me as much fact as you want to give. What, what's the truth? The truth is the word of God. And the word of God says I'm healed by his stripes. And by faith, in the name of Jesus, I apply the blood. According to the word of God, I'm healed. So now I've got a threefold power. Satan doesn't matter what you do against me. you telling me I'm going to lose my job? That's okay. <laughs> I don't care what you tell me. In the mighty name of Jesus, I will not lose my job. And if I do lose my job, in the name of Jesus, you'll give me a better job with better finances. I cover my job with the blood of Jesus Christ. And according to the word of God, even if I lose my job, my God will supply all my needs according to his riches by glory in his glory because I'm a tithe payer. Right. I was just trying to help you a little bit there. <laughs> Come on, are you are you are you getting the word is righteous? It teaches you, man. It shows you it's your blueprint. We you know what? We gotta become Zorro Christians. Pull out that sword. <laughs> And when that demon of destruction or fighting or argument or fear or anger or bitterness or hatred or abuse or rejection comes against you, you say, come to Papa. <laughs> and you've got the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. And you go, quip, quip, quip. Right. And you remember what Zorro did, right? When he went, quip, quip, and that enemy would look down, there was a Z written on there. And they turn around, and, quip, and then they go, quip, quip, and they go, and they'll be of God. We've got to go, come to Papa, let me show you something. It is written. And when they look down, there's a J for Jesus. Jesus said three times when Satan tempted him, it is written. It is written. I'm not saying you will not be attacked. I'm not saying you won't get sick. I'm not saying the devil will not torment you. We all go through trials and tribulations, right? But are you just going to... Let Satan walk on you, and you're just going to hum, hum, hum. Afterwards, that old Dodge truck is going to run out of gas in any case. <laughs> oh, I want to pull out the sword. I want to use that name. I want to apply the blood. I want to start swinging that sword. Let me just give you one little nugget. I always use this as an example. If there's two trees, a tree, the sickness, and a big... What's those big trees in California? Redwood? If you got a big sword and you go, whoop, and you cut that tree off like a, whoop, and the tree's cut off, and you go to the redwood tree with the same sword, how many times do you think you're going to cut that redwood tree? Once? Nope. Whoop, whoop, whoop. You're going to keep on cutting until the timber, whoop, so you might have a headache, or you might feel a bit oomphy um today. <laughs> Which says I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. Quickly gone, right? 
but you might have cancer, or you might have COVID, or heart problems, or diabetes, and you've got to, it is written, by the stripes of Jesus, the word of God is fire. I will keep on beating you until this thing falls down. Don't you stop using the word of God, okay? You swing that, that word of God. Listen, when you speak the word, the devil's hands has got to fall. And when you speak the word, you hear the word. And when you hear the word, it goes into your spirit man. And when it's in your spirit man, your spirit man sustains you, holds you up when you are sick and in times of trouble. And when it's in your spirit man, it comes out of your mouth again. And what comes out of your mouth? Faithful words. No fear. No worrying. No stress. Come on, it's not easy to get rid of fear and, and, and stress and worry and discouragement and disappointment, but you can fight it with the word in the name of Jesus, covered by the blood. Number four, Jesus said, when I go to my Father, I will send you another helper. The most unused power, the Holy Spirit power, which has got the resurrection power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, that power that was in Jesus Christ is in you and in me. And if you don't have it, you better come out and let us pray for you to get filled and baptized with the Holy Ghost. Because in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus said, when that Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive power. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and in Athens, the ends of the earth. If you're a witness for Jesus Christ, the word witness in the Greek means to imitate, to duplicate what Jesus, who Jesus was. When that Holy Spirit comes in you that was in Jesus, you will duplicate, be witnesses. You will show people, oh, blue, blue, blue side shoes, uh-huh. What have I just done now? I've just imitated Elvis, right? In the mighty name of Jesus, out, you unclean spirit, you deaf, dumb, blind spirit, loose. That's what Jesus did, right? Demon-possessed man, go, you demons. Leave him, go. That's imitating Jesus. But even the disciples, when they were with Jesus, Jesus had to give them his authority, his power, right? And when he left, he said, now that I'm going to my Father, now I'm giving you the Holy Ghost because I'm not going to be here no more. So now that power comes from the Holy Spirit. Who's the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is your helper, your comforter, your teacher, your sanctifier, your empowerer, your anointer, the spirit of glory, the spirit of truth. That's who I, who's inside of you. Guys, you and I are sitting with an atomic bomb inside of you. And it's waiting to explode so that people can see the power of God. And we just say, well, I don't know what, I don't know how this is going to work, you know. There was a lady in, in Graham, Texas one day. I came there, she came, they, they, they had a... And we're going to have food for the, for the church and because we were there uh, Sunday afternoon. She comes running in. She said, Brother Hansi, I'm so glad that you are here because I've been having excruciating pain in my back and I was just waiting for you to come and pray for me when you come. I said, ma'am, why didn't you let your pastor pray or somebody else? No, no, only you got that power, Brother Hansi. I thought, oh, my goodness. She's got a misconception of what, what's going on here. So the next day, I said, okay, well, okay, I'll pray for you tomorrow. And I, I said, anybody got prayer the next Sunday morning? She was up, the first one. And other people came out, and God said, don't pray for her. I looked around, I said, um, man, would you come pray for this lady? Oh, she freaked out. No, no, I want you to pray for me. I want you to pray for me. I said, no, ma'am, that lady's going to pray for you. No, but you could. I said, that lady's going to pray for you. I went to pray to somebody else. Pastor Nathan, it wasn't five minutes later. Oh, oh, I'm healed. I'm healed. I thought, that just shows you. I am not your healer. 
He is not your healer. Pastor Cass is not your healer. Your faith has healed you, but there's power inside of you. When are you going to pray for your wife? When are you going to pray for your children? When are you going to pray for your husband? When are you going to pray for your children? When are you going to become the disciple? And the prayer warrior with power in the name of Jesus, with the blood, according to the word of God, and the power of the Holy Ghost. And the most useful power of the Holy Ghost is that authority that you had, that commanding authority. When Jesus came to Lazarus when he was in the... uh, um, Grave, what does Jesus say? Father, I thank you that you've heard my prayer. Thank you that you always hear my prayer. Lazarus, come out. That's the Holy Spirit. See, some of us, oh Lord, if it is your will, will you please heal Sister Susan? Oh Lord, please don't let the COVID kill her. What are you trying to do? Why are you begging God for something that he's already done and that he's already given you authority to do? Lord, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Father, for hearing my prayer tonight. Sister Susie, I command that COVID demon inside of you, you katab spirit, you destructing, destroying demon virus, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, by the stripes of Jesus, and in the word says, that this power, this word of God will set you free. I command you in Jesus' name, out. You see, we don't pray like that. You guys don't pray like that. In Africa, that's how the people pray. And where you come from, most probably. Because we don't have what we have here. When are you going to get off that little self-pity pony and get on that white horse? Bah! That stallion and say, man, I'm, I have got Christ Jesus. Through. God loves me like he loves Jesus. Man, that was good. I, I, I knew that, but when you reminded me of that, I said, man, oh, man. Woof. I know Jesus is special, but so am I. <laughs> I'm also chosen by God, special by God. When are you going to do a little bit of self-deliverance in your home? Some of you are sitting here with anger in your life. Bitterness in your life, unforgiveness in your life, hatred in your life. You had abuse, you were rejected, you were unworthy. When are you going to go home and say, in the name of Jesus? You don't have to shout it, I just like shouting it. (laughs) I just like to say, you're trouble, you know, like a, I I just don't want to hit you, I want to hit you hard, Satan. But you don't have to, you you, you can just say, Jesus, he's got a bell. Hey, when are you going home and say, in the name of Jesus, my house will be clean from rebellion, from fighting, from stress, from strife. Get out, Satan. I command you to get out. Enough is enough. The anointing of the Holy Spirit destroys that yoke and that burden. When are you going to say to yourself that what you're battling with, that anger that's inside of you, you anger demon, I command you to get out of my mind I command you to get out of my body. You do not control me. This is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I command you in Jesus' name, get out. I cover myself with the blood of Jesus, and you fight that thing until it's gone. Some of you men are battling with pornography. What? Instead of putting, pushing that finger in, start praying and say, in the name of Jesus, I will not do that. I will not touch that thing again. Some of you ladies have been sexually abused, physically abused, verbally abused by men, your fathers, your grandfathers, your friends, or whoever, start speaking to yourself and release yourself from that stuff. Don't walk around bound up in, 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 in grave. That's why when Lazarus came out of, the, uh, out of the grave, Jesus said, loose him. We have Christians that are saved, full of the power of God, walking around because they're like mummies. They've all been bound up by all this stuff. Hey, it's time to be loosed. Why don't you loose yourself? Why are you waiting for us to do it? Oh, that doesn't mean you don't have to come out for prayer. But when you come out, you say, listen, I've already prayed about this. I just need you, Pastor Nathan or Cash, And well, Hansi used to agree with me pa, quickly. And where two of us agree on earth concerning anything that we ask, the power of God will work. We've got to finish up. Are you getting this? Can I, can I just say one more thing about the Holy Spirit? The gifts of the Holy Spirit is power. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is power. 
Why? The fruit of the Holy Spirit, love. Ooh, love has got a lot of power because it covers a multitude of sins. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Peace. Oh, shalom. Shalom, Jerusalem. Shalom means wholeness, completeness, prosperity, healing. Man, there's power in the fruit when you function in, in, in the fruit because Satan cannot touch you. You know, walking in the flesh. You're walking in the spirit with the gifts of the, uh, with the fruit of the spirit. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. When you have wisdom and knowledge and discernment, oh my goodness, that devil doesn't know what to do. When you're walking in, in, in the gift of the prophetic and the gift of faith, oh, he said, what can I do with this guy? When you, when you walk in the gifts of healing and the gift of miracles and you're speaking in tongues and you're interpreting the tongues sometimes, Satan doesn't know what you're saying. He's fed up with you. He'll leave you and come back at an opportune time like he did with Jesus. But every morning when you wake up, I start saying, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against me in judgment I condemn. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. I take the blood of Jesus and the body of Christ. Thank you, Lord, you protect me today. And you know, all those demons that were waiting for me, they said, there he goes again. <laughs> because they saw me pluck out that sword and say, in the name of Jesus, by the power of God. And I was swinging, I'm swinging that sword. When I drive, wherever I drive, I'm hitting with that sword. I don't want Satan close to me. I have the power, so have you. The same Holy Spirit that was in Jesus is in you. Say that, the same Holy Spirit that was in Jesus is in me. I have the power of God. I am anointed. I can do all things through Christ Jesus. That gives me the strength. Give the Lord a clap. Now let me end off like, like this. There's still angels, angels that are with you. Prayer is power. Faith is power. Fasting is power. Right? There's other tools that you can use. I've just done four of the that I feel is the most basics that we're just ignoring. Come on, child of God. Rise up. And this just don't go in. Listen, when you're in a boxing match, the first punch that's thrown doesn't end a, a boxing or match. Sometimes it does. But most of the times, it's, there's punches that are thrown, and you go 15 rounds, and you come out the other side all bruised up and cut up. But guess what? You won. You're the survivor. You've gone through it. Many of you sitting here have gone through sicknesses, through cancers, through financial problems. You name it. But the fact that you're sitting here is, shows me that you're a survivor. You've gone through it. You can put your hands up and say, my God has fought the victory for me. But listen, the power of God is not only do you believe in the power of God, you've got to speak the power of God, show the power of God, love the power of God. God does not give you something. Joey, you can sit in that dodge and you can hum it as much as you want to. It's going to go nowhere. You've got to use that power that's in that thing. Right? I could have a gun and never pull the trigger. Use the power. Would you give God one more clap? Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Come stand with me. All right, I want to do something different. I want you to pray with me. Will you do that? Yes. Was I too long? No, you're not. Am I good? Okay. <clears throat> Everybody just put your hands like this with me. Just hold it like this. And you, you don't even have to close your eyes. You can just look at me if you want to. And just repeat after me and say, Father God, Father God. thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, for the blood. Thank you for the cross. Tonight, of all my sins that I've done today, I ask you to forgive me as I repent and confess. I believe that I'm saved, and I am saved. And tonight, Father God, I also believe in the power of God. I have the power of God. I am anointed. I have the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the word of God, the Holy Spirit, and I got angels all around me, and I am a warrior, and I will go through attacks and through fights, 
and I will survive in Jesus' name. So right now, Lord, I'm going to proclaim, and I'm going to tell the devil and all the demons, you stop right now in the mighty name of Jesus, with the blood of Christ, according to the word of God, and the commanding power and the authority of the Holy Spirit, I command every demon and you, Satan, to get out of my life, get out of my house, get out of my finances, get out of my family, in Jesus' name. I cover everyone and all things that belong to me with the blood of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord, for protection in the mighty name of Jesus. And I give you all glory and all honor. And I'm going to use my power. So watch out, Satan. Here I come. I am protected. I put on the full armor of God in the mighty name of Jesus. I am healed tonight. I'm set free tonight from all anger, all bitterness, all hatred, all unforgiveness, all complaining, all discomfort, discouragement, disappointments, etc. In the mighty name of Jesus, all cancers, all growths, all tumors, all viruses, all infections, all germs, all diseases, and any other sickness has got no place in my life. In the name of Jesus, you have to go. Get out. And the Holy Spirit power fills me up and heals me and restores everything that Satan has stolen. And I thank you tonight, Lord, for your power. Come on, give him a shot and a clap. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, no more. Okay. According to what I remember, Satan's under your feet. You're not under his feet. I just think, and I don't want to preach, I'm just thinking, you know, if, if we can just start looking like these guys that fight in the rings and stuff, when they walk up there, I mean, they look like they're vicious, man. I mean, you don't want to play around with these guys. When you get up in the morning, Satan's going to say, ooh, what happened to this guy? He was still a last night. Tomorrow morning, what, what's going on here? They're going to be afraid of you. We're not going to be afraid of them. Listen, this, this COVID thing is serious, right? N nobody's playing it down. But you don't have to go around fearing it's going to attack. And if you, if, if you do get it, go home and get, in, and get well. But in the name of Jesus, speak life. Speak wholeness. Cover yourself with the blood. Speak the word. Speak the word. The word will take it away. Holy Spirit, come on. Come on. If there's anybody here tonight... I want you to look at me and do it different. Is there anybody here that came here tonight that has never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Because then you won't be able to use this power of God. You won't have the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is not for people in the world. It's for you and I. The people in the world don't, don't have the Holy Spirit. They don't have that power. Is there anybody here that has backslidden or has never accepted Jesus Christ. I want you to do what I did 36 years ago and put my hand up in front of people and say, I have not accepted Jesus Christ. I don't know what's going on, or I have, but I've backslidden, but I want to make right with God tonight. Put up your hand so I can pray for you tonight. There's one. There's one. Who else? Who wants to make right with God? One person. Two persons. Three, four, five people. Would you keep your hands up and everybody pray with him. Say, Father God, I repent of my sins and I confess my sins in the name of Jesus. Please forgive me. I give my life back to you. I give my whole life to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you that I'm saved now. I'm on my way to heaven. Holy Spirit, come. More of you, Holy Spirit. Nothing of me. Fill me up, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ. And I thank you for my salvation. Give God a clap for these one, two, three, four, five people. Thank you, Jesus.
if you don't mind, the, the five of you that have given, if you just want to afterwards come and just say hi to me and shake me with me and, and, and come to pastor, let him just see who you were. Please don't go home. Just come. Maybe You guys come here. Come here quickly. Come here quickly. Just come here and face the people. Listen. Thank you guys have done a great stuff. I don't know if, if you've been born again and if you've backslidden, but th these are the, f the five people that put their hands up. Is there, was there anybody else that I, that I missed? Is there somebody over there? Did you also pray? Is there, any, is there anybody that, that prayed this prayer that for the first time or by making right with God? Any, anybody else? Isn't, it, isn't this great? Okay. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray over these people, or these young people and these young people, I pray a blessing of the Holy Spirit. I thank you for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. I pray that the Holy Spirit will, baptize, Father God, will baptize them in the Holy Spirit and with power in, in Jesus' name. Heal their bodies, Lord. Wash them clean tonight from all their sin in the name of Jesus. If there's any one of them that's sick, heal them tonight. Bless them tonight. Touch them tonight with a fresh new anointing touch and make them whole. And Satan, you have lost again. These people belong to Jesus Christ right now. They do not belong to you no more. And whatever their mistakes was, they are forgiven. They are set free. And I thank you, Lord, that they will start living for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I give you all praise and glory and honor. Pastor, do you know them in the name of Jesus? Some of them. Okay. Do you want to talk to them in this now? If, will, you, will you do that, please? Or just somebody take their names and just talk to them and just lift them up, okay? All right. And before we go, I know it's late. Listen. God, yeah, 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 yes, yes. Give the Lord a clap. Thank you, Father God. We give you praise. I know it's a bit late, but this is a conference, so it's not every Sunday. If I was here every Sunday, I would have nobody here. I know that because people would go home. Is there anybody that wants us to pray with you tonight for healing, physical, spiritual healing? Maybe you've been abused. Maybe you've had cancer. Maybe you are sick where you are right now. Is there anybody that needs us to pray for you? Come quickly. Let us pray with you while the band's going to play, and then the rest of you can, yeah, just, just let me start praying for them, and, if, and then if you have to go, then you can go quietly. If you want to stay and um, pray with us and agree with us, is there anybody that needs healing? You need healing. You need healing. Would you guys stand there for me? Thank you. Okay, you guys, one, two, three, four, five, six, would you just move that way quickly so I could get you out of the way, and then we could... Pray, pray, for, pray for you guys. Thank you. Okay. What do you two guys want? You want healing? Okay. I'm going to pray for these people. And can I just do this quickly? No, I just, what is wrong with you, man? Diabetes. Can I just show you... As an example, what I would do when I pray for people to use the power of God. Put your hands up like this. In the name of Jesus Christ, I come tonight and I curse that spirit of diabetes inside of you. I command you by the power of the Holy Spirit to be loosed from her. I command that pancreas to function. I command the blood sugar to come back to normal. I break your power diabetes. You have got no power over my sister. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I cover her with the blood. The word of God said by your stripes she is healed. And we believe and we receive that Lord in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you that the Holy Spirit resurrection power will raise her up now in Jesus' name and be healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The blood sugar go down now. The pancreas, oh, you got type 2 diabetes. Thank you, Lord, that she'll eat right. Thank you that she'll exercise in the name of Jesus Christ. I set you free tonight from that curse of diabetes, and I give you praise and glory. Say, so thank you, Jesus. I receive my healing. Give God a clap for her healing. Now you, 
believe, doesn't matter what you feel, you go home and you start speaking. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. I received my healing. I am healed. As easy as that. Go, you are healed. Your faith has healed you. Right. Keep going, Pastor. Uh, Hans is going to keep on rolling. Guys, if you have kids, we know that the kids are ready to go home, go to bed. If you need to go, we release you. But we encourage you, if you would like to stay and receive prayer, come on up here and receive prayer. Don't miss the night. If you're leaving, we bless you. We bless you're coming in and you're going out. We'll see you tomorrow night right here at 6 p.m. And again, don't leave here needing prayer. Don't leave here needing prayer. God bless you. Have a great night's sleep. We have other ladies up here that are ready to pray for healing as well. Stephanie right here is our speaker from tomorrow for tomorrow night.